Never underestimate the emotion involved in a game between the Boston Bruins and the Montreal Canadiens, even when one team is well in first place and the other is looking at a lottery pick. That's what we learned last night, and we're going to talk about it on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, a daily show where we discuss all things spoke be. My name is Ian McLaren. Today is... Wednesday, January 25th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day. Podcast is free and available on your favorite podcast app, Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, Pocket Casts is what I use. Uh, We're also on YouTube, so please do smash that subscribe button on both the audio and video elements of the show. would be very much appreciated. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. The podcast is available everywhere, and you can also find it on Twitter, Instagram at locked NHL Bruins, and you can find me at Ian C. McLaren. Like many of you, probably pretty frustrated last night watching the first period of the game between the Boston Bruins and the Montreal Canadiens. Full credit to Montreal goalie Sam Montembo, who frustrated the Bruins early on and really made it look as though the Canadiens might steal one. The 15th place in the Eastern Conference Canadiens going up against the number one team in the NHL. Because of that disparity in the standings, you might have thought that the emotion would be lacking in what is one of the great rivalries in hockey. But the emotion came first from the coach and trickled down to the rest of the team, and the Bruins came out with the win. If you don't know, Boston's bench boss, Jim Montgomery, hails from Montreal. I was actually watching the French feed for a bit last night because the TSN feed was flickering in and out. It was pretty annoying. And uh, Montgomery took a question on the bench in French. He attended some games at the old Montreal Forum as a kid, saw that rivalry in person. kind of coming up, and he mentioned that this game, his first as Bruins head coach in Montreal, meant something to him. And Bergeron, the captain who's from the province of Quebec, we'll touch on that in a second, said that's something that he genuinely loves about the new head coach, his communication. He lets the team know how he feels, And it was nice to get the mention that it's a game that meant a little more to him because it's his hometown and he grew up watching the Canadians. It speaks volumes of the connection he's making with the guys and his style of coaching. More personal, more personable, and it helps the guys take ownership and increases accountability in the locker room to make sure that players are at their best. Now, Patrice Bergeron, of course, grew up a few hours away near Quebec City. Uh, There was much made of him possibly using his leverage as a free agent to sign with the Montreal Canadiens this past summer, seeing as his former agent is now the general manager. But while he said it's an organization he respects a lot, He grew up a Nordique's fan, 
And therefore, it's always that much more special for him to beat the Canadians because that was a pretty intense rivalry back in the day as well. He understands and recognizes the tradition, everything the Canadians have been through, the legends that have worn the jersey. For him, it's a lot of pride to play for the Bruins with that same kind of tradition and the legends of the game be a part of it. He always tries to enjoy and make the most of it, and that he did, scoring the eventual game-winning goal. Jeremy Swayman even said he got a bit emotional prior to the game. It's a historic rivalry. Absolutely loves being part of it. It's a special thing that goes way back to all the people who wore the jersey before them. He said he got a little emotional when they come out. They're playing Fix You by Coldplay. Kind of a double meaning there. Canadians, certainly a team that needs a fixing. Something special. And uh, he said literally almost tears came into his eyes. That's how much he loves the game, being part of an original six rivalry like this. And uh, he came out and continued his recent run of success. Always a special place to play, even when there's such a huge disparity. And it was a tighter game than we expected, thanks to Montembo, thanks to Kirby Doc scoring a couple goals for the Canadians. I had predicted a 4-1 game, ended up being 4-2, Doc scoring twice. Montreal decimated by injuries, but they played a great home game. Their emotion was up, you know, wanting to show that they're not pushovers for the remainder of the season, uh, beating the Toronto Maple Leafs the other night, even. And uh, yeah, it was a closer than expected game, but there was a pivotal turning point for the Bruins and a long overdue goal from Taylor Hall. We'll talk about him here in a moment. But first, this episode today is brought to you by our new sponsors, at FanDuel. FanDuel is the number one sports book in America. If you're new to FanDuel, even better because they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers can join today and get started with a $150 credit in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. They have all your favorite bets from money lines to point spreads, player props, and you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same day parlay, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Don't miss out. Again, place your first $5 bet to get a $150 free bets, win or lose at fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of Locked On and the NFL. All right, so last night's game, like I mentioned, was slightly touch and go for a little bit, thanks to some stellar play by Montembo, who made some very good and important saves for the Canadians uh, to keep it scoreless in the first period and through most of the second Kirby doc scoring a power play goal to open the scoring. And then about five minutes later, it was Taylor hall who broke through with his first goal in uh, quite some time since December 17th. In fact, that's 16 games without a goal. It was on the power play. He knocked a loose puck at the left post and a huge goal for Taylor Hall because the Bruins really need him to get going and to be on top of his game here down the stretch. Yes, he's been playing on the third line. It's a bit of a reduced role. Jim Montgomery made some adjustments during the game last night, taking Craig Smith off the top line, bumping him down to the third line, a reunion of the Oceans line of number 11, Trent Frederick, number 12, Smith, number 13, Charlie Coyle. Uh, David Pasternak went up to the top line, and Taylor Hall took some shifts with um, Pavel Zaka and David Krejci. 
Now this goal came on the power play and was assisted by, uh, I believe, David Pasternak and Charlie McAvoy, his 14th goal of the season, and really an important one for Taylor Hall, who hopefully can uh, make more of an impact offensively here when these games start to matter most, take some of the pressure off the big guys. That's been key for the Bruins so far this season is that secondary, even tertiary. Is that the right word? Scoring. Uh, so huge goal for Taylor Hall. David Krejci scored halfway through the third period to put the Bruins up by a score of 2-1, to one, also assisted by David Pasternak. The Bruins did allow Doc to score again, to tie things up, to make things interesting. But Patrice Bergeron, the captain, noted Nordique's fan, sealing it for the Bruins with a goal at 17.05 of the third period. David Pasternak adding some insurance with his 37th goal of the season into the empty net to make it 4-2. If you're keeping track, that's a four-point game for Pasternak, who now sits in sole possession of third place in the points race, four back of Leon Dreisaitl, still 19 back of Connor McDavid. What's a bit closer is the goals race. Pasternak second there, 37, three behind Connor McDavid, who seems to be running away with the Art Ross Trophy for most points, and the Rochard Trophy for um, the most goals. Jeremy Swayman with a strong game for the Boston Bruins. Once again, he is now creeping closer to Linus Allmark's league-leading numbers. He's fourth in goals against average, 2.25. Only Jake Ottinger of the Dallas Stars and Ilya Samsonov of the Toronto Maple Leafs has a better goals against the average. And of course, Linus Allmark is number one there. Save percentage, uh, Jeremy Swayman trailing a bit. Allmark still leads the way at 938. Swayman coming in at 916. So still... Above average, certainly, for uh, our boy Jeremy Swayman, who has been very good as of late and really helping to seal Boston's Jennings Trophy win uh, as having the best goaltending duo in the NHL. I think those were pretty much the big takeaways from last night's game when it comes to Big Bear of the Night. I mean, I want to give it to Taylor Hall for getting that monkey off his back. He had three shots on goal uh, to go with the actual goal, but it's hard to deny David Pasternak, four-point night, seven shots on goal. He looked amazing. And uh, every day that we don't have a contract extension, just uh, not worrisome, but would really like to get that done. Now with the win, Boston reached the 80 point mark in their 47th game of the season. The fastest team to that mark in NHL history per NHL stats. A lot of it is confidence. They keep winning. Pasternak said at the same time, they're all going, all four lines are there for each other. They're all playing together a tight knit group. And that's probably the biggest thing going for them at the moment. Uh, Pasternak himself became the ninth player in Bruins history to have a poor, four point game in Montreal first since 1983, second player in team history to reach 30 goals and 30 assists in 47 or fewer games. Um, Tying Phil Esposito, not tying Phil Esposito, but Phil Esposito did it five times. So the accolades and the, uh, yeah, the 
incredulity. I'm just making up words today that Boston's season is bringing to us just continues to grow and grow. We're going to take a look at what's next for the Boston Ruins, as well as touch on the possible president's trophy curse here in a moment. I want to thank you so much once again for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your day, free and available on all podcast platforms as well as on YouTube. So please do smash that subscribe button so that you never miss a thing. On tomorrow's show, we're certainly going to take a look at the weekly cup check where we look at the NHL's top five teams and where the Bruins rank among them. No surprise that Boston will be number one. It's just incredible how far ahead they are of the competition. They have 14 more points than Carolina, New Jersey, and Toronto, all who have 66. Boston, 66 plus 14, up at 80 points. 851 point percentage. So that means they have taken points 85 percent of all available points to them this season incredible plus 83 goal differential which is if you add up new jersey and dallas's goal differentials equals plus 83 bruins there on their own 181 goals which is the most scored in the nhl 98 which is 25 fewer than next place new jersey it's just incredible and it got me thinking about the last really great team, regular season team in the NHL, which was the um, 2018-2019 Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, they uh, finished with a record of, uh, let's see here, not some results we don't want. They finished with a record of, oh crap, why can I find it? The 2018-19 Tampa Bay Lightning. All right. They finished with a record of 62-16-4. and four. Road record of 39-2. and two. One of the best um regular seasons in recent memory second team in league history to win 62 games matching the record set by the 1995 96 red wings however as we all remember they were swept by the columbus blue jackets in round one of the postseason did they not face enough adversity did they um crumble Mentally, what was going on there? We don't know. Sometimes you have to lose in order to win. The many Bruins benefited for, from that Tampa Bay loss, I should say, by meeting Columbus in the second round, helped them more easily advance to the Stanley Cup final, where we all know what happened then. The captain of that Columbus Blue Jackets team Nick Foligno, who remains without a Stanley Cup on his resume. So you factor in his firsthand knowledge of beating the Tampa Bay Lightning, his firsthand knowledge of later being part of the Toronto Maple Leafs that failed in the playoffs, getting later in his career, his speech at the Winter Classic, urging the Bruins not to waste these opportunities. And I think that is something that is to the Bruins' benefit. The leadership group, not only do they have Patrice Bergeron, David Krejci, who's been around forever, seen so much in his career, including two Stanley Cup final losses. David Posternock, who leads by example. Charlie McAvoy. But Nick Foligno's presence, I think, will certainly help um, break 
whatever you believe about the president's trophy curse, the regular season and the playoffs are so different right now. The Bruins are far and away the best team in the NHL. I don't want them to take the foot off the gas or come back down to earth in order to avoid winning the president's trophy. It's a distinction to win the president's trophy means you are the best team in the NHL over the course of 82 games. Yes. We want them to win in the playoffs. And I think, the leadership group that they have there and Felino's firsthand knowledge of that lightning collapse will help them to avoid a similar fate. I don't know. Just a thought I had this morning on tomorrow's podcast. We will do a cup check. Like I mentioned, we will also preview Boston's next game, which comes up tomorrow night against those Tampa Bay lightning. Uh, and uh, bring you all the latest on the black and gold here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. It is uh, up here in Canada and on social media, a mental health awareness day. I'm not going to bring attention to the company that sponsored it, made it notorious, perhaps. I will say, like I do after every podcast, please do take care of yourselves take care of each other. Mental health is important today and every day. Uh, Be kind to yourselves, be kind to each other. And uh, we'll talk to you again here tomorrow on Locked On Boston Ruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.